thought it would be fun to workshop the topic of facilitating value creation, the values that we have as an organization, or perhaps the values we might need to begin to foster as an organization. Yeah. Yeah, I did prep that a little bit for our conversation today. Yeah, let's talk about it. So I did um, create this uh, facilitation exercise. Jeff, we want to take a second to talk this through, right? And then I would love, I, I would love to have, uh, let's pile on everybody um, on this as well. There's a million ways to do this. We all know this, right? Um, a couple of things that I wanted to comment on is, and this is just a kind of an opinion of ours and feel free to uh, disagree with it, but I always sort of say, you know, we do this thing with when running a, 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 a strategic direction setting process or designing strategy, we just say mission, vision, values, like, because it sounds good. It's like just good alliteration. And I think that really does um, short shrift to the values process. So, uh, you know, and I think, you know, a couple of collabs ago, we really talked about, um, we talked about, you know, culture and shift and, you know, all, and we all know the importance of values and beliefs and everything. And so I think sometimes we just like lump values and like right after vision just because it sounds good. And so I just would say, you know, my first comment would be if you're facilitating a values creation exercise, consider the idea that maybe it needs its own workflow. Consider the idea that doing this that I'm going to share right here is, is, is interesting, but not sufficient in terms of actually embedding values into an organization. So that's that. So this is like super tactical on like facilitating values. Um, and again, open to everybody's feedback on this. I, I honestly think um, Patrick Lencioni's um, facilitation uh, exercise that's in the advantage is quite good. Um, and I don't wanna go through all of that, but you know, he has a, like different levels of values, which I think is kind of confusing, personal opinion, go with it if you'd like, but he has very good prompting questions. And so just in fairness, this question right here is his question. So I, I wanna give attribution appropriately, but you know, the art of the question is something that um, is uh, really important, of course. And so assuming that you're starting a conversation with the executive team, maybe it's actually, these are actually sessions you facilitate with staff groups, right? Um, there's a lot of, you know, there's a bunch of different ways to do this, but this is just an idea of, you know, how you could structure an exercise. So the question is, um, uh, think about a past or present team member who embodies what is best about your company, your organization. And again, this is Patrick's question. And, you know, here's like a sea of possibilities of values. Um, what are three or four values or traits that makes that individual so admired to you? So that's like really connecting with, and there's really good examples in his book, but that's really connecting with like, think for a second about like, you know, someone that you, yeah, somebody that really embodies the, the traits or values. So that just makes it a bit more concrete. Okay, awesome. And I have this built-in Miro. Um, you may use Miro, you may use Mural, you may use a like a physical whiteboard. Obviously doing this as a physical whiteboard exercise, we would do a little differently. So I'm just gonna talk for a second about, um, about using digital tools. So, you know, my instructions would be like sticky dot, literally the three or four values um, that, that connect with you. Um, about the person that you've identified that makes them so admired. And I would use, I think everybody, if, if you can see my, um, you're looking at my screen and you're not in the Miro board, you know, Miro has pretty cool facilitation um, techniques that are quite easy. Um, so here's your little voting uh, icon and you can set up the ability to vote um, on the sticky notes. And again, I'm not gonna do a Miro, Miro training here. I'm not like an expert at Miro, but anyways, um, and we would start, you know, start the timer and your, you know, everybody in your group would, would put a dot on, you know, four values. You could create new ones here. So that's also why I left some blanks. So point of fact is it's kind of addicting to use the really awesome digital tools that exist for us today. This is like the best. Um, that's how I would do it. I'm not going to literally ask all of us to do this right now, but that's what I would do to, to identify the, identify the three or four to see where people are coalescing. 
If you were doing it physically, I would do the following prompts, give people three or four sticky notes, ask them to write down like one value per sticky note, put them up on the wall and organize like ideas, right? We all know how to do that. So, you know, this is a digital way to do it. That's a physical way to do it. I found the coolest thing yesterday when I was prepping this. And let's assume for a second that, you know, these had sticky dots on them and they, they would be dotted. So, you know, forgive me on this for a minute, but I'm just going to like color these for a sec. So they would be dotted and it would show you the main themes. And what I uh, identified in Miro is their new AI, which is, where'd it go? Uh-oh, it was here yesterday. Okay, maybe you can't use that many things. Let's try it here. Well, shoot. I, I think what you're looking for is one of those boxes uh, to immediately to the left of the lock when you have that drop down menu. Uh, so yeah, where is it, Matthew? Menu. You know what I'm talking about, right? It's create themes. Uh, yeah, I've seen it. So yeah, one of those boxes to the left of the, immediately to the left of the lock. I think it's one of those. Oh, here it is. Yeah, can you see it now? It yes. says cluster yeah. box. Okay, cluster by color, tag, author, keyword, sentiment. So I'm going to do this for a minute. I'm just going to show you this. So obviously you wouldn't select all these values, right? This is not how you would do it, but just, this is some cool AI. So keywords or sentiment. So it will... All right, that was sentiment. Let's try it with keywords. Okay, so it just took all of those values that I had here and tagged them based on like essentially keywords or theming. It's not beautiful right now, everybody, you can see that. So there's too many things here for it to work, but you get the idea. So I would create themes based on the values that were selected. But what I was gonna say was in Miro, if there's less things, it would do the theming for you on the fly. Cool. And then the next thing is to identify the key behaviors you want to see that demonstrate that value in practice. So I think that's a really awesome. So again, I think that's a great best practice with our values that the value sentence is a, an expression of a behavior that you expect to see when that value is in practice. Maybe you have a couple of them. Maybe there's one of them. Simple is better. Um, again, you know, that's totally riffing off of Patrick's stuff. I saw a bunch of head nods there. So again, the idea is individual contribution. The prompt is there for you. Synthesize it down into three or four, five themes. Use the AI, do it yourself. And then identify key behaviors you want to see. If I was doing this, I would assign a value to a small breakout group, maybe two brainstorm behaviors come back together. So I'll pause right there. That's just a thought. Does it, I, I, I would open the floor to anybody else that has a question that maybe you've used as a prompt or another way that you've done this that you've found to be super effective. Stacy. Stacy. Hello there. Um, I had more of a question than a, than a contribution. I agree with this completely and I love this approach and thank you for sharing some of these up. Uh, tool, these digital tools, because um, I'm less familiar with them. But if you are facilitating this in a hybrid manner, so some folks are virtual, some are in a room, would you facilitate it as if everybody was virtual? So bring this up in the room and then everybody's on their computers. That's the worst scenario, but sometimes clients want to do it, right? Oh, Stacey, so interesting. We were just working on that yesterday with a hybrid uh, session that's coming up. And I was, mm -hmm. you know, I, I said to myself, gosh, the folks in the room shouldn't be punished because they're there in person. Right. Make everything digital just because there's some people that needed to be remote, right? How do right. we bridge that? And so a suggestion I would make though in this particular example is I would do like this digitally and then mm -hmm. I would out into groups physically and do the behaviors piece. So I would do a, I, not to point a out, hybrid. I would do a hybrid. <laughs> Yeah, I would, I would do a hybrid. I think you kind of have to actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, and then like, I was thinking also for some of our other exercises, you know, that you really think about like, oh, you have a, you have a, 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 
a, a structure virtually on the um, on your your virtual flip charts, and you have those right. physical structures in place. You right. take a picture of that physical, you bring it into the virtual, right? Like I think there's some ways okay. to hear about that. Okay. I think it takes a lot of work. I'm not lying. I mean, all of us are like, yeah, geez, but it's, it's the worst. It's totally real. <laughs> like it's just real. Right. Yeah. right. That's so, right. I don't think, I hope that, does that help? I think that it I, does. I, okay. It does. Okay. Matthew. Thank you. Matthew. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I'll actually, uh, chime into the answer to that last question. Uh, I don't have any direct experience with this, but a uh, trainer that, uh, I trained with, was all digital during the pandemic, then started to go back to hybrid. Uh, his method was to, like, there is no physical whiteboard. It's all on the virtual board, so as to not exclude the remote people. Um, but, I mean, most meetings the, these days in person, everybody has their laptop anyway. So they use the virtual board as the coalescing, but there was still quite a bit of, like, it's a laptop, cool. Go to your table in your groups. You have your breakout boards. So it's, uh, he found it to be as effective, um, but again, that's him, not me. So I can't speak to that. Thanks for um, sharing. The, um, my original point was um, actually that same person introduced me to this basic dynamic um, as an exercise called uh, best team ever. And it's about building team working agreements. So it's same sort of thing have a list of group norms, a couple places that people can write in their own and say, all right, what's the best team you've ever been on? What were the norms of that group? And then from there, it's very quick to identify like, all right, everybody had this experience of this group norm. How can we build a team working agreement that fulfills that norm? Cool. Thanks, Matthew. No, I think also also interesting. Um, I don't see anyone else's hands up. I'm I was going to mention Ryan's hands up. Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> Unless Jeff is sick of hearing from me. Uh, there you go, Brian. Here I am. Sorry. Uh, it, it was actually general. I don't know if you're going to be talking more about values, uh, or is this the values section uh, that you're going to be doing here? Because so I've got it, it goes slight. My, my thoughts go slightly different direction in that refreshing the values those that list there of 60 or so items there is fantastic and pretty much really everybody ought to have pretty much every bit of that in there we should all be caring citizens and all the rest of it what i typically find it's only sort of four or five or six that are the most vital in an organization at any one particular time that's burning the organization so i don't know we're not patient enough with each other or we're, we're not very loyal or whatever it is. So it's kind of surfacing those areas. And that this prioritization method is a fantastic one that you're talking about. But I was really thinking about the refreshing of it because when you talk about it and have uh, during the one-to-ones, you discuss how somebody's behaving with regard to the values and everybody sees it on posters and things, actually gets better. And then the refresh, I typically see it between one and two years the refresh for these values. Um, yeah, I'd be interested in other people's opinion on this. And you do see some of very, uh, the, the august people like Steve Jobs videos saying, you know, you've got to keep your values. Once you've got, you've got to keep them. Well, you, you, sh you should obviously stay true to the values. I'm not saying drop values, but other ones might need to be highlighted as organizational wide adjustments and evolutions are required. And so your question, Brian, is for what other people's feedback on sort of time. So, um... Yeah, well, for, yeah. Do they agree with that concept of refreshing it as opposed to sticking with something forever? And then what is the cadence if it's a refresh? Yeah. Any Anybody want to chime in on that experience? Jody. I mean, I, I, oh, go ahead. Hi, sorry. I was actually just thinking it's not so much the experience, but um, a lot of times when we think about values, we think at the high level company corporate level, but to what extent can we actually use this to almost drive change of culture within teams and smaller teams? Um, sorry, as you guys put this up on the screen, I just literally had someone come to me saying that we've just recently restructured and they're trying to figure out how do they 
merge two cultures together, one that's high performing and one that's been slugging along. And I saw this and I was like, I have an idea for her, so thanks guys. <laughs> this actually could really work. Um, just ruminating on it. So this is interesting that we always think of values at the high corporate level, but it can actually go down to a deeper level. Um, cool. Sorry. It's an on brand point, but I just thought to share thanks, that. Jody. Yeah. I, I, I have a, an observation and an opinion, but also a question of the team. We've been talking about the values and the behaviors that foster those values that serve us as an organization. I've also experienced conversely doing a similar exercise of identifying the values that do not serve us in our vision, our mission, and what behaviors today are fostering those values that do not serve us. Anyone on this call that has experience going down that path? Yes, unwanted behaviors that need to be eliminated, that are unhelpful. They should be identified, talked about. So, and Jeff, Meg had her hand up as well, just as a- Meg. Oh, hey, hi, I was just, I was adding it in chat. I'll, I can be quick. I was gonna just bridge between Jody and Brian. I think that you do wanna stay the course. And then to Jody's point, you also wanna recognize those moments when a values refresh can be really, a, can be a difference maker. And so, you know, from our perspective at the food bank, coming out of the pandemic, we, re we did our values probably five years ago. Now we've gone through, you know, we've changed, the world around us has changed. So it seems like a good time for us to bring that conversation back up for the whole organization. It wouldn't be just change for the sake of change, but so much has, has changed around us that it seems like a good time. And lots of new people to where we started the conversation, lots of new people have joined um, and it brings them around the table. So I'd say it's somewhere in between stay the course and you'll know when it's time to refresh, You know, trust your intuition on that, whether it's at the team level, as Jody said, or organization wide, I feel like it's sometimes it's it's pretty obvious when you need to kind of have a, a fresh conversation about values. That's a fair point. There you go. I also think a simple values survey, not calling it that, can also be super helpful too, right? Just to do that pulse check. So that's another way to know whether we've moved away from those values being as authentic, authentic is a strong word, but as connected with who we are as an organization going forward. Um, and Jeff, I might just add one last thing and then I'll, you probably want to wrap it up. Um, yep. And Matthew and team, I, maybe we continue this at our next AMA is, um, I think it's interesting to uh, know that there's, you know, there's values and right, Brian, there's short description of what it means through a behavior. And then mm -hmm. there's norms. So, you know, and then we end up with all these lists. So I think that's kind of a, I, I always personally struggle with that. So I'm, I'm just going to park that there for a second, but I do think, you know, group norms and values could be the same thing, but they can also be different. So it's just something to, something to put on the parking lot. Uh, for us to explore another time. I'd love to hear how people are wrestling that to the ground.